If you're like me, then you might currently be using VS Code and want to switch to Vim, but you're kind of intimidated by it. You might see people like the Primogen or Luke Smith highlighting their fancy ways of doing things in Vim and how fast, how blazingly fast it is. Well, the jump can be a little bit difficult because there are a lot of ease of life features that you get used to in VS Code. And today I just wanna walk through some of the main ease of life features that I've taken to using Lunar Vim. As an aside, the reason I wanted to switch over away from VS Code is not because I have a problem with VS Code necessarily, but I use the Vim extension because I like the keyboard navigation with Vim. And I found that recently, as I have more extensions for various tools, the VS Code Vim extension just gets slow and I'll have these, these moments where I type something and, and it's not responsive. And then after the fact, it'll all fill in when I had moved my cursor somewhere else and it just kind of causes a mess. So. It's for that reason that I'm kind of trying to switch away from VS Code and start using Lunar Vim. But admittedly, there are certain circumstances where I can't do all of the things that I want to do. So I do open up VS Code for those, those situations still. Now, if you don't know what Lunar Vim is, it's an IDE wrapper around NeoVim. If you already know your way around a document with Vim, then Lunar Vim might be the next step in getting to a full IDE. If you want to get started with Lunar Vim, you can install it by going to the installation page and following the instructions for your operating system. I'm on macOS and I already have it installed, but basically you can just run this command and that will get it uh, installed for you and ready to go. Once you've installed Lunar Vim, to open Lunar Vim in a directory, you just run lvim dot or the path to your directory. I'm already in the directory I want to use, so we'll just go with that. Now here I have a little file explorer with some open source apps that I like to use or have taken a look at and whatnot. So uh, we'll just open one and we'll just navigate down and open up the uh, readme. Okay, here we go. Now, once you're in a file in Lunar Vim, you can navigate around and change stuff like you would with Vim normally, but there are some extra features you can use. Now, the first thing you should know is that space is your leader key. And when you press space and wait, it gives you a menu with different options for features you can use that are part of Lunar Vim. So first we'll look at the file explorer. So to access the file explorer, I'll hit space E and that's kind of brings me the VS code experience where I can navigate my files by scrolling here. I can click and use my mouse and stuff as well as navigating up and down into files with Vim navigation keys. Now, if I want to close it, I can hit space E again. And if I'm in it and I don't want to close it and I want to navigate to the file, I can either click on the file that I'm editing or I can hit control L, which will, it's like navigating right uh, according to the Vim direction keys. Uh, and now I'm in the document and I can go back and forth with uh, control H and control L. Now this works for other windows too. So if I uh, control W S for a horizontal split, or I think it's horizontal when it's that way. Um, I can also use control I and control J to go up and down and I can close one of these buffers. That's what it's called as a buffer with just control Q or colon Q. A couple more things about in the file explorer, you can add a file by navigating to the directory in which you want to add the file. I'll just make it in the root directory here and pressing a, and then you can name the file. I'll just call this one text. And now we have a new file text, which is completely empty. You can also delete a file by going to your navigation and finding the file you want and hitting D and then yes to confirm it. And now the file is gone. And the last thing that's nice about the file explorer is you can search a file name the same way that you would search for text in a document. So we'll do slash and then I'll look for yarn.lock and then boom, we can go right to that document. We can close the explorer and here we are. Now, maybe you don't want to use the navigation and you just want to go to a file. One way you can do that is space F and you can search the name of any file. So we'll go to git ignore and it navigates us right there. Now, perhaps instead of searching for a file name, you wanna search for text. So in order to do that, you can hit space and then S T for search text. And here we'll look for center, which I know shows up in the git ignore, or sorry, in the readme. And I guess the readme in other languages as well. Yeah, you can, maybe that was a bad example of text you can search, but you can search for, you can grep for text in a file. At any point, if you wanna exit either of those menus, uh, you can just press escape twice once to get out of insert mode and then once to exit the menu. Now, right now I'm on my git ignore tab and perhaps I want to go to the readme tab and instead of opening the explorer and navigating there or searching for the readme tab, maybe I just want to go to the next tab over. To do that, I'll hit space B, which is for buffer navigation. 
And here we get the menu because I waited a second and we can see N for next. And if I want to go back, it's space B, B for back. And I can keep navigating back like that. Now I think I already showed this, but in Vim, if you want to split your window, the way you do that is control W and then V for a vertical split or control W S for a horizontal split. And then, like I said before, you can use your control and the navigation keys to go up or down or left or right. And then the, the last thing that I find myself frequently using in Lunar Vim is the terminal. So to access the terminal, you hit control backslash, or I think that's a back or a forward slash, the one that's above the enter key. So it's control forward slash, I think is what it is. And you get your terminal. And inside of here, sometimes what I find myself doing is using tmux. So I can start a new session and then I can uh, control B C to create a new window. And to navigate between windows and tmux, it's control B P or control B N for previous or next. This can just be useful in case you have multiple commands that you wanna be running at the same time. Uh, you can also run Lunar Vim inside of tmux. Uh, so you, you kind of have a lot of flexibility in terms of what you wanna do there. Okay, there we go. And now I'm out of tmux. And if I had a tmux session still going, so now I have one going, I'll detach from it with control BD. I can reattach to it using tmux A, and now I'm back in the same session. Even if I close my terminal, that will still be there. And I'll just exit out of that for now. Now the last tool that I find myself using uh, in my VS Code replacement is a tool called LazyGit. And this is something you can install if you're on Mac just using Homebrew. Um, but first, let me just change some files. So here I'll make some changes here. And then we'll go here in funding. We'll edit this file as well. Redirects, make an edit there. And now if I do lazy git, now you can see here that I have these files which have changes but have not been added or committed yet. So if I want to add a specific file, I can press space and that will add that one. If I want to add all of them, I can hit A and A again to unadd them. And once I've added them, if I want to make a commit, I just hit lowercase c and then I can type in this is my commit message and hit enter. And then I can see my branches if I hit L. Uh, I think this might help if I zoom out a little bit. I can navigate between files, branches, commits, etc., using H and L. And then within commits, I can go down or up with J and K. So this one has yet to be pushed uh, and I won't be able to push directly to this repo, but if I were to press capital P, then it would push this commit. Anyway, that is lazy git. So those are all the tools that I find myself using more frequently these days. I will say that there are a couple things that VS Code can do that I have not yet figured out how to do effectively. Probably the most tedious one, I'll show you this real quick. The most tedious one that I've found so far has been search and replace across multiple files. I know Vim has the ability to search and replace using, I think it's colon S, but this is just such a nice experience here. So sometimes, uh, like for my job, if I'm editing a lot of Terraform files, which have a lot of repeated values that need to be changed, uh, I'll still open up VS Code just for this feature. But most of my other editing, I'm trying to switch over to Lunar Vim. Well, thank you for watching. I hope this proves to be helpful for you. Um, essentially, I wanted this to be an opportunity to kind of show the main features that Lunar Vim has that you might want if you're switching over from VS Code, at least the ones that I have found that I have wanted. So I hope it was helpful. And if you have any other features in Vim or Lunar Vim or even VS Code that you think I should know or other people should know, please leave a comment because I'm always trying to improve my workflow and I'm sure the, uh, the internet knows more than I do. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.